Bonjour, mes amis. Hello, my friends. This is a special episode of the Sanibel Chronicles, not necessarily uh, Sanibel related, but it was part of my life and I was recently sharing memories of, uh, of the day, April 30. This uh, day, today, is the 181 year anniversary of the Battle of Cameroon that the French Foreign Legion battled in Mexico when Emperor Napoleon III was trying to uh, wrest Mexico from the Mexicans. I guess it's been, I had it written down here how long it's been, but it was in 1983 that my dad asked me if I would join him and go to Europe to participate in the French Foreign Legion Cameron Day celebration. It's held each year on April 30th at the Foreign Legion's headquarters in Auburn, Rabon, France, that's down on the south side of France near Marseille. So I agreed I'd, I'd go with him. And uh, it was an experience of a lifetime for me, something I, I really enjoyed that I did with my father that uh, will probably stay with me for the rest of my life. I'm trying a, a new technique today. I'm trying to uh, since I don't script anything, I'm trying to reference uh, photographs to keep myself on track, photographs being on my cell phone. But I'm wearing a Kepi Blanc. Uh, on April 30th, 1983, while I was at the, uh, the celebration in Aubon, I, I purchased a, a keepy blank, but they didn't have my size. And uh, I gave that to my, to my son. And a couple of, I guess a couple of years later at my, my father's work working, I received one that, that fits me and this is it. And it's probably the first time I've worn it since, uh, other than for jokes, since about uh, 1985 or so. But this is a genuine Capy Blanc. The, the, uh, the Battle of Cameroon, I've had to make a few notes because I've forgotten some of the actual uh, facts. The, uh, let me put on my computer glasses so I can see what I'm talking about. And, uh, on that, on that date, April 30th, 1863, a contingent of French foreign uh, legion, legionnaires, it was the third company, the first battalion. They were to travel uh, to uh, a major city uh, in Mexico on the way to Mexico City to safeguard, safeguard the, the roadways and see that supplies ran on schedule. But in the little hamlet of Cameron, Mexico, they faced off with a number of Mexican regulars, both uh, infantry and cavalry, and they fought an eight hour battle. Uh, this is a photograph that I captured uh, online, I, I certainly hope it works, of the, the battle at Cameron. These are wearing a, a KP block. The Mexicans are, are wearing sombreros. But this was a battle that lasted eight hours. 65 foreign legionnaires fought off 2,000 Mexican troops, 
The Foreign Legion was led by a Captain Jean d'Anjou, and they refused to surrender. Their goal was to, to fight to the death. Uh, overall, the stati statistics show that there were 30 Legionnaires killed or fatally wounded, 19 died from wounds, 12 survived imprisonment, even though they, they were, were wounded. Now, one of the themes of the, uh, of the uh, Cameron Day celebrations in, uh, in France is a formal, formal parade. And at the beginning of the parade, I must say that the parade was one of the most perfect military parades I've ever seen. The French Foreign Legion has a very unusual step in their marching. And you can go, I'm sure, to YouTube and see some of the Cameron, C-A-M-E-R-O-N-E, -E celebrations that show the marching. It was just, just to me, it was an incredible. The, uh, at the head of the parade, I believe it's one of the oldest living members of the French Foreign Legion carries a case that holds the wooden hand of Captain Jean uh, Danjou. And they keep that in their museum and they take it out only for, for Cameron Day uh, military exercises. We, uh, we arrived in, in France a couple of days before the celebration and made our way way south. This uh, next image is my father's, I believe it was his next to the last invitation to the celebration. He, after the first year, uh, he asked me to go because believe it or not, my father who lived to be 87 never drove a car in his life. So he, he asked me to go so I could be a chauffeur. That's what it amounted to. And this is, is the invitation. So after the 83, he met several people, uh, a retired major in the foreign legion became one of his good friends. And he met a woman, my, my father was a wid widower at the time. And he met a woman, her name was Jenny. And I have a photograph of her somewhere in my slide collection, but I haven't taken it out. And uh, they became friends. And after uh, 1983, my father would fly to Paris and either Jenny or Major Goldsmith would come and pick him up and take him down to Aubonne for the, uh, the celebration. Uh, when we arrived at the, at the headquarters, now the headquarters of the French Foreign Legion up until I believe it was 1960, somewhere in there, was in Algeria. But after Algerian independence, they moved their headquarters back to France. And at the, uh, the entrance to the, uh, to the, uh, the base, we came face to face with our first uh, legionnaire who was standing guard at the entrance. And this is him. I don't know what kind of rifle he carries. I, if I knew, I, I forgot, but he's also wearing La Quipi Blanc. The, this next uh, image is a, an officer. I don't know exactly what rank he is or why the uh, the white uh, accoutrements. He he may be a be a sergeant. And this is my my father and Major Goldsmith. Uh, I took this in in 1983, and it so happened that years later, the major sent me his major's cap, and I have that in in my in my collection. 
this is the the national the the, um, the 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 home base uh, apparatus for the Foreign Legion. And I'll tell you a funny story about this. When I had w walked out to get close enough to to take this photograph, there was a large concrete area in front of it, and there was a low rope around it with no no signage. And I stepped over that rope, I walked up, and I took this photograph, and all of a sudden I heard somebody yelling. I turned to my left, my dad had stayed outside the, the line, and here's a legionnaire come running up, spewing French, which I didn't understand, waving for me to get off, and I stepped back across the rope, and he said to me, we can speak English if you wish. He was a, a Canadian who had joined the French Foreign Legion, and I believe he was a, a sergeant. The, uh, there were hundreds of people present. It was a great party. Beer was flowing, food, all kinds of, uh, of activities. And this next shot is my, my father... Uh, standing with three uh, French foreign legionnaires, retired. And these three, they have, it, they have their berets on. They were paratroopers. And they were veterans of Bien Vien Phu, the great battle in Indochina when the French were finally beat and would soon be driven off by the Vietnamese. And, of course, the grand old USA then had to step in and take over the fight. And we all know what happened to us in Vietnam. This next photograph is just a shot of the parade. Uh, they came in, in regiments, different regiments. There were paratrooper regiments, there were infantry, there were artillery, there were parachutists, there were helicopter units. They all marched in, in their, own, uh, their own group. And when, it, like I said, when it first started, it uh, it uh, was an old legionnaire veteran carrying a glass case with Danju's wooden hand in it. And as I said, it was one of the greatest military exhibitions of precision marching. And of course, they have their their own band. It was really a, a tremendous experience. And just a few things. Uh, after the, the celebration, we went on from there to, uh, into Germany and Luxembourg. And at Luxembourg, I visited General Patton, George Patton's grave. And this is his grave as it was in, in uh, 1983. I believe it's changed somewhat uh, since then. I'm, I'm not positive on that. And then I, after we left uh, Luxembourg, uh, that uh, American cemetery there, we went on to Bastogne. We went to, it was pouring rain, and my dad wanted to go to Verdun, and uh, one of the greatest battles that ever happened, uh, happened during the First World War. He wanted to see that, so we visited that, and we stopped for lunch in a, a little park in, uh, in Belgium. And lo and behold, here was this image of this uh, wall with uh, General Patton's, Patton's uh, uh, face as, as the prominent figure of the, uh, of the trip. After touring a little more around Belgium, we... Uh, headed back to, to Paris. And for some reason, I don't know what either one of us were thinking, we never gave Normandy a thought. We had like two or three days to kill before our flight back home, and we had ample time to go to, to Normandy. I've been kicking myself in the behind for the last 40 years for not, not going there. 
in fact, uh, I guess it was 2020, I convinced my daughter Leslie that we should uh, go back to Europe. And uh, we had scheduled a, a repositioning cruise uh, from Port Everglades to to uh, mainland Europe and then over to ending in the UK. And we could have gotten off the ship, I think at Cherbourg in, in, uh, in France and uh, gone to Normandy and then fly back from home from France. But COVID put the jinx on that plane and now, some four years later, it would be too difficult to uh, to make the trip. So I didn't get to Normandy. Uh, my people, my ancestors, came out of Normandy and Brit Brittany. They escaped France in 1648 and migrated to the Channel Islands, uh, namely Jersey where the LaBeouf family spelled a different way than I do, of course, L-E-B-O-E-U-F, uh, was still uh, an existing family on, on Jersey, but my research shows there are no more LaBeoufs on Jersey. My great-great-grandfather entered the, uh, the British Navy from Jersey and while being mustered on the ship, they changed his name to what it is today, and that was 1832. It's been, it's been that way ever since. But getting back to Paris gave us an opportunity to do, explore more, and one of the things we did was to visit Napoleon's tomb. And this image is a, a shot uh, of the lower level of Napoleon's tomb very, very attractive uh, place to, to uh, spend eternity. And my part of my Cameron Day celebration today will be to turn on Apple TV and watch the new movie, Napoleon. I've been looking forward to it. Happy Cameron Day. And when I complete this and I get it all put together and see if it works, I'll begin celebrating Cameron Day. It's become a, a tradition for this part of the LaBeouf family. So with that, we'll fade off with the French National Anthem. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little tidbit of my life. It's something that I'll, uh, I'll never forget. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up, and for those of you who haven't yet, please subscribe. Thank you very much.